Well, hey everyone out there, thanks for choosing our short explanation of the expansion to Port Royal. It's Port Royal, just one more contract. It's Chris here from JMNC Games, and I thought the, uh, the title of this game was actually kind of fun because I used to uh, work on ships for many years, and that was something that everybody always used to say, just one more contract and I'll be done. <laughs> well, uh, today we are diving into this expansion. It's made here locally by uh, Mindoc. It's for two to five players, ages eight and up. Average game time is about 20 to 50 minutes. Uh, the objective of the game, well, it depends on which version you play. Uh, with the expansion now, you can play either uh, competitively or cooperatively, or you can even play a solo version of the game. Now, if you're not already familiar with uh, the basics of Port Royal, we actually already did a video for that, and this video is not going to cover the basics, so click on the, uh, the link there. It's in one of those corners I always forget. Uh, and that'll take you to our other video, which will show you the basics of how to play the original game of Port Royal. Then come on back this way, and we'll show you what are the differences with the expansion. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. We greatly do appreciate that, and it sure does help us grow. And now, let's dive in and take a look at what's inside the box. The expansion contains two more ships of each color for a total of ten, three new characters, the Gunner, the Vice Admiral, and Clerks, you can tell which cards belong to the expansion by this small mark on the top right of the card. There are 15 wooden cubes, three of each color, and 18 large contract cards. Before we get into the setup and gameplay, let's go over some of the new cards. For the character cards, let's start with the Vice Admiral. Much like the Admiral, when it's your turn to select cards during the trade and hire phase, if there are three or four cards available to be taken upon your turn, you may collect one coin from the deck. The Gunner. When this character is with you, during the trade and hire phase, when it is your turn to select a card, count how many ships are available. Subtract one, and then collect that many coins from the deck. The Clerk. When this character is with you, during the trade and hire phase, if there is a ship of the same color and you choose to take that ship, you may take one additional card from the harbor. Keeping in mind, you are able to pay the costs for the card, and if you are not the active player, you must still pay the extra coin to the active player. For the character cards, you shuffle them into the regular deck, just like you would in a normal game. The contract cards can be used two different ways during a game, either competitive or cooperative. When you look at a contract card, you will see the following parts. The title of the contract, the requirements for completing the contract, the coin space, which shows the amount of coins for completing the contract, and this is where the little wooden cubes are to be placed, showing which player was able to complete the contract. There is a seal in this corner which is used only for the cooperative play. And the back side of the card, you will see one victory point. Now that we know some of the basics about the cards, let's look at the gameplay, and we will start with the competitive version of the game. First, go through the contract cards and find the two cards that have a blue seal. These are only used for cooperative play, so remove them and return them to the box. Shuffle the remaining contract cards and draw four at random. These cards will be used for the game. The others will not, so return them back to the box. Place the four contract cards face up to the side of the play area so that everyone can see them. Each player should choose a color and collect their blocks. The game is played the same as the original game, only now you are able to complete the contracts to collect money and earn extra victory points. You can complete a contract at any time during the game, 
even if you're not the active player. Each contract has a different requirement. Say, for example, on this card, if I have a captain and the mademoiselle within my cards, I can claim completion of the contract. Once I do, I place my block on the leftmost coin square. So I would place it here on the three, and I would collect three coins. The next player to do so would get two, and so on. You can only complete a contract once. Once you are able to claim two contracts, you would collect one victory point. If you are able to complete three contracts, you will collect two victory points. There are lots of different types of contracts to complete, so we won't go over each of them, but if you're unsure of what the requirements for completion are for a particular contract, just refer to the rule book, which breaks down each of them. In the competitive play, just like the original game, the first player to 12 victory points triggers the end of the game. Once that round is completed, if no one else has 12 victory points, that player is the winner. If there is more than one player with 12, then count the coins in their hand. The one with the most is the winner. And if it's still a tie, the players share the victory. In the cooperative game, you must complete a certain number of contracts together in a certain amount of time. Time is being measured in the form of a separate draw pile comprised of normal cards. It's called the time pile. At the start of each player's turn, you must draw a card from the time pile. You can also play this variation in a solo mode. First, shuffle all of the contract cards. Based on the number of players, will determine how many contracts to draw. If you're playing with five players, 11 contracts. Four players, nine contracts. Three players, seven contracts. Two players, five contracts. And if you're going solo, draw three contracts. Place the contract cards in the play area for all to see and return the others back to the box. Shuffle the playing cards. You will need to draw a number of cards for the time pile. In order to determine how many cards need to be drawn first, draw 13 cards regardless of the amount of players, plus the total sum of the numbers in the seals of the face-up contract cards, plus one card for each different letter in the seals of the face-up contract cards. Say, for example, if the letter A appeared three times, you would only add one additional card. Once you have determined the amount of cards that need to be drawn, you do so and place this in the time pile face down next to the normal draw pile. Now, the play is the same as a regular game, except when the active player is to start their turn, they draw one card from the time pile and their subsequent cards are drawn from the normal pile. Players are trying to complete all of the contracts before the time pile runs out. Each contract only needs to be completed by one player in order to be considered complete. If the team is able to complete all of their contracts before time expires, they win. If not, well, they lose. If they do win, count how many cards remain in the time pile. Each card is worth one point. If you get zero to one point, well, you're a landlubber. Two to three points, sailor. Four to five points, a pirate. Six to seven points, captain. And eight or more points, you are the ruler of the sea. And so that is Port Royal, just one more contract. Lots of new ways to play. Uh, you can play with your friends, you can play on your own, uh, you can play together or against each other. Either way, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you do have any questions about Port Royal or Port Royal, just one more contract, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those as quick as I can. And if you haven't already done so, take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel.
We sure do appreciate it. Well, now we know the basics, so let's play. Thank you. 